Good afternoon, everybody. So, so last night I spent two hours um, talking to a young man that I know, and although he has some experience in the category of marriage and he's very helpful to a lot of his friends, um, I believe that he came to talk to me one because we just haven't talked in a while, but also because I carry 21 years of experience in marriage, and he wanted to avoid some of the pitfalls that. I have incurred in my life. Um, as some of you know, I, I was originally married when I was 19, and um, we divorced, and then I got married again, and, and that was for four years. So I have 21 years of marriage experience. Now, for all the things we talked about, this morning I get my I get a message from someone from my sister who tells me about this this, this article that's going around on social media, and I find that one of my friends. Um, she has it on her social media page. So I read the article by a man named Jill Rogers. Now, he's coming from 16 years of experience and his divorce was just finalized. And he was talking about some of the lessons that he learned. And although some of the information, a, a decent portion of the information is good information for somebody to take in. One of the biggest, but there were some issues within the message. And, and what he does is, is something that me and the gentleman I was speaking to last night talked about in great detail is the fact that he creates this fairy tale illusion that unfortunately most women will fall into believing that this is what it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to be you know the snow white the sleeping beauty the those types of um situations but it's just not so but he does try to end it by talking about the fact that you know marriage is you have to put the work in in order to have this continuous flow of happiness but the problem and maybe he hasn't had enough time to sit back because his divorce was just final the problem is that his lens is purely from the male perspective purely purely from the male perspective and when when people give marriage advice that's purely from a one-sided male perspective this is usually where things go awry you see last night when I was speaking to the young man you know Yes, I, I, we talked about the things that I saw that were um, that, that were problems within my marriage coming from the female, but I also expressed the problems that I created and the things that I stopped doing or the things that I moved away from. And, and, and that, you know, in itself brought the, the, the entire picture. And see, this gentleman, Gerald Rogers, doesn't create the entire picture. He, he talks about the fact that the man, as a man, you should continuously date your spouse and that sort of thing. But the woman needs to continuously date her husband as well. You see, I can't continuously... Let me put it like this. And this is something that me and the gentleman talked about last night. The same thing that he kind of experiences and, and, and what I've been finding out a lot of men experience. We come home or we get home before you or whatever the case may be. But that first time that we've seen our spouses after we've separated to go off to work, we come home and you got on sweatpants, you got your hair pulled back, you got your hair wrapped, you're wearing a raggedy t-shirt, there is absolutely nothing physically appealing about you at that moment. Yes, we know that you're beautiful. Yes, we know that you are fine. But men are incredibly visual and when we see you and day after day after day, the majority of days that we see you, you are not looking presentable, then that spark for us to want to date you doesn't happen. Or if Every time we see you, yes, we, are, we, we want to come and listen to you. We want to hear about you. We want to talk to you. We want to communicate with you. And a man should want to do that. But if all our communications is purely you complaining, 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 but never looking for a solution, and you just want to complain day after day, week after week, year after year, after a while, we don't hear you no more. We don't want to talk to you. We want to avoid you. You see, this guy's perspective is just coming purely from the male, but... It's a, it's a team. What he forgets is that it's a team. That it's two people who have to work together on this. And then some of the things are just outright crazy. That you are going to do more damage to a relationship than you're ever going to hurt. I mean, help if you follow some of these tenets. And I'm going to give you a couple of them. One of them, he says in number five, you know, love what she becomes whether you want it or not. Yes, everybody will change as time goes on in a relationship. I'm not the same person today that I was four years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. But if I became something that is completely against what you as a woman would want in your man, then you should not just accept it. If I became a drug user, should you accept it? If I became an abuser, should you accept it? If I became someone 
who did, if I became a man who didn't feel like I want to provide for you anymore and I decided I just want to sit at home and not work, should you accept it? If I decided that I was a clean guy but now I want to be a you know nasty, horrible hygiene, don't wear deodorant, don't take baths, or should you accept it? If I decide that I want to become argumentative all the time or angry all the time or, you know, you should not accept this because that's not what you married. It's not what you married. So don't, you don't have to, you should never just accept what a person has become and then just live with it. I see that in my store every day. Every day I see couples coming here who don't talk to each other, that they got anger and animosity towards each other wonder why they even in the store together they've been better suited to come by themselves at least they would have had a good time but they seem irritated that the other person with them and I've seen like couples who do this and they've been coming here for years another thing you say is that they're not responsible for your happiness or your sadness that's straight bull let me tell you something one of the reasons why you even started dating somebody because they made you feel happy. One of the reasons why you married them because they made you feel happy. They made you feel special. That's why a woman marries a man. He made her feel a certain way. We are responsible for the other person's feelings. Otherwise, there's no point in being married. If you are not responsible to make me happy and I'm not responsible to make you happy then why even be together I should just continuously date because at least during the moments of the dating I'm making that person happy and they're making me happy so as to say that we're not responsible is illogical and stupid that's something you know that just doesn't even make sense because it defeats the purpose of even being with somebody the purpose of being with people period you have certain people who are your friends and certain people who are not your friends because of the environment and the relationship and the way they make you feel and those relationships break up because of how the environment and how they make you feel so that's idiotic all right so you are responsible couples need to know that they are responsible for uh, the other person's happiness and sadness he said, never blame her or get frustrated or angry. I'm sorry, but if my wife disrespects me, if my wife does something that is completely out of character, if she does something that hurts the family, I am going to be angry. I'm not just going to say, it's okay, baby. I'll handle it. It's okay, baby. You didn't know. Please. Yes, he talked about forgiveness, but you forgive, but a message needs to be given that it wasn't acceptable for whatever you did. It wasn't acceptable. And if the, and it's and like I said, his lens is just from the man to the woman, but it goes back the same way. It is not acceptable for a man to go do something that irritates, frustrates, that pro, that provokes his woman. She should be angry so that he knows that he's causing her that emotional distress, so that he can then know not to do it again. All right? He said, take her sexually, take her in your masculinity, and let her melt away in it. If your woman is tired every night. Or tired period and you come home and you just try to jump her and she's telling you no that is marital rape okay and then if your woman is consistently giving reasons or excuses why she doesn't want to be intimate with you what man wants that at least the woman out on the street who's flirting with you she wants you every I don't care let me tell you something ladies every man wants to be wanted so to have the idea that the man is supposed to always come after the woman, no, we want to know that y'all want us too. But it's a two-way street. This is what I'm saying. This guy is not understanding that it's a partnership, that it takes two people. Yes, the man is the authority over the relationship, and he should set the tone. I'm not saying that he's not. But understand that the other person is my help me. It is not my slave. It is not my second, you know, my, my, my something I step on. You to help me. So you're supposed to be there with me doing it with me if I am coming to you with attraction and, and affection you need to come back with the same you know and then one of the last things he said about don't worry about money I'm sorry but in most situations most women cannot feel sexually attracted to you or feel that they, they will be stressed out if the money's not right and if the money's not right they're gonna feel like they don't want to you know they don't want to perform and they don't want to go out or whatever now I will say that in this situation women need to understand that sometimes things happen in life that hurts the finances and if it does it is not your opportunity to shut down because now you're shutting down the activities that will allow your man to feel invigorated to go out there and fix the problem or make more money there was a study during it done in germany where um, women who gave their husband that big sloppy kiss their husbands made 30 percent more than the ones who gave their husband a little peck or gave him nothing at all when they left the house 
a man needs to feel that type of environment. Otherwise, he's going to fail. So, ladies, Gerald Rogers, he's going to hurt your relationship. So, don't listen to this dude. Just shoot the meat and spit out the bone.